Hey, what's happening, Wargamers? It is Leland here with another uh, unboxing for Marvel Crisis Protocol, and we are going to be taking a look at the man, the myth, the legend, Wolverine and Sabretooth. Uh, now, of course, Wolverine has been a perennial favorite of very many characters for, or very many people for a very long time. He is, uh, he is literally the best at what he does, and what he does is not very nice, if the, uh, the quote were to be to be taken seriously there and uh you know we're gonna see how he kind of shapes up in game this is some tough plastic on this one there we go so we are gonna take a look at them uh both models right off the bat i'm, I'm liking the poses here i like uh, wolverine has sort of that come at me pose and i like saber tooth it looks like he's striking in uh and the two of them together look like they they go together which is really nice so let's get everything out of here all right so as usual, I'm not going to worry about the, the instruction manual. We, we all know what that looks like. So we'll take the models out of the way here. And we're going to crack right into right into the uh, the contents. So we're getting a couple more tokens here. It looks like we actually have, um, appears to be Brotherhood tokens. Uh, I like the, the purple helmet for, for Magneto there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and let's see, what do we got here? So we have the Weapon X program. So for Wolverine or Sabretooth, it is three power, and you basically throw the character. So that is a way of getting them some uh, additional uh, some additional distance there with a short for three power. Anytime you can move them out of activation, that's fantastic. We got exceptional healing. Uh, so this one is you spend three and reduce the amount of damage suffered to one. So if you happen to take a really big attack, say from Strange or Thanos or something like that, you know this this can save your bacon. And then we got one two punch. We've seen this one before. I believe it's in the core set right there. Basically, uh, basically you're just adding some attack dice for one power. Uh, so really solid. Uh, nice, nice bit of uh, cards there. It's also nice to start seeing some more double ups on cards, uh, just to get some more tactics in there. Uh, I don't think there's any rules if you don't taking the same tactic card twice, but I'd have to look into that. So let's take a look at Sabretooth first. So we got six uh, six health, we got four threat, threes across the board. Uh, his basic strike ability right there causes bleed on a wild, which is nice. He also has pierce uh, on one wild. So that's actually quite effective. So that, that's quite nice. And five damage at that. Uh, Savage Predator, four, uh, four energy, seven damage. And he's got on a uh, hit and a wild. Um, basically, okay, follow up with a claw slash. So that's actually really nice. That That is action economy right there. Um, simply because, you know, anytime you can do additional tax is fantastic. If you have the eight power to do it and you roll two, uh, and you want to do two savage predators and you happen to get that finisher off twice, that's four attacks. So that, that is just a lot of attacks. So with, uh, with no mercy, uh, basically for power, well, you can spend up to three power and you can add up to three dice to your attack. Uh, I, I like it at the same time. I, I don't. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's not bad. Uh, oh no, sorry. It's three power and you roll, add one die uh, for each damage the target character has. Okay. Sorry. It's a little bit different. Um, three power. I, I don't know how much I like it, but it does definitely put on the hurt. Uh, untamed force is really nice. Uh, basically whenever, uh, whenever an attack is resolved against them, they can, uh, basically, uh, use claw slash. <laughs> and what's not like about any sort of counter attacks with a, uh, with a reactive ability uh, and then aggressive basically whenever an attack targeting the character is resolved they may advance short if damage was suffered uh, so that's really good because it means a lot of the pushes a lot of the throws really aren't going to do a whole lot to saber tooth he's going to be hard to get on position and of course he's got healing factor one which means i believe at the end of activation he gains a health back and we got wolverine over here and uh, right off the bat, you can see he is a tough little bugger at seven health and four threat with four physical defense. Uh, so he's going to be a tough one, especially considering he's got a healing factor as well. Uh, he's got the adamantium slash, which is basically the same as claw slash for uh, for uh, Victor over there. So a bleed and a pierce. He's got his berserker barrage, and uh, this one's kind of cool because it's a range three, but you place Wolverine within range one uh, before damage is dealt. And again, out of action or uh, out, out of regular sequence movement, always great. And um, yeah, and then if the damage is dealt, if it's size three or less, you, you can throw it short. So you're even throwing them out of uh, position, which is great. Uh, the best at what I do, basically, it's a move and attack action. 
Um, and then let's see here, the, the wilds in it count as two successes. So that, that can actually really hurt someone as well if you get some good wilds there. Uh, so, you know, really solid. And then Adamantium Skeleton, basically he counts as size three for uh, for being thrown. Um, which, I mean, not not too bad. It's going to suck if he's getting thrown around at you or your, your own people. But, you know, it does mean he's a little harder to push around. And then he's got his healing factor of two and he's immune to stun. So, you know, really solid card. He's, uh, he's definitely going to have a place on the table. Uh, so looking forward to, to seeing that. So we got uh, Sabretooth here, and really simple uh, design here. Not a whole lot going on. Nice big torso there. Good connection points. Uh, it's got that good leaping motion. In fact, it looks like the smallest bit here is the head and the hair. Yeah, so it looks pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be too hard to put him together. And then we got Wolverine over here. And <laughs> thankfully, there was a lot of jokes that the, each claw was going to be its own piece. Uh, but thankfully, that is not the case. Uh, it does look like we have a couple of head options, much like uh, with um, with Cyclops. Uh, once again, I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably the probably the masked one, just because that is the classic look. Uh, but aside from that, very simple, very easy to build. So as usual, we are going to take a quick break, get these put together, and uh, take a look at it in a little bit. So be right back. And we're back with Wolverine and Sabretooth, and we got them uh, both assembled and painted up. So we're just going to start with Sabretooth right here. And uh, just in general, the model was super easy to put together. There wasn't really a lot of pieces. The um, the most complex piece was honestly just putting his little uh, bit of hair on his head there. Otherwise, he was extremely easy to assemble and put together. And honestly, he took the colors extremely well as well. Now, of course, like going in on the details, you can see where some, there's some flaws there. One thing I've noticed with the X-Men and the Brotherhood so far is that there's a couple more gaps uh, that, I've, that I'm used to seeing on a lot of the models that they've brought out these days. It's not a huge issue, but I'm just, it's a weird little thing that I'm starting to notice. Um, but anyway, I really dig Sabretooth. His contact point is nice and solid. His pose is good and menacing. Actually, I think I see a little bit of yellow there that I got to fix on his hand. Um, and just in general, he is, he's a great model. Um, I, I have to admit he's very much growing on me as far as, uh, as far as models for the game go. Uh, but anyway, we have a second model here, and we are going to take a look at Wolverine. And as you can see, I opted to paint him up in the uh, the brown costume uh, that he was seen, I believe, in one of uh, one of his earlier or the earlier uh, stints of him. And um, one of the downsides is is they molded in the tiger stripes on him, and unfortunately, because of the what the way I wanted to go with his costume, those stripes are still kind of there. I've seen other people do the same thing, but like painting the stripes brown. I opted not to do that personally. Uh, but anyway, I still really like his pose. Um, one thing to note is in the instructions, they did mess up uh, which hand goes on which arm. So just pay attention to that. I think it's like six and eight were swapped. Um, so if you're building Wolverine yourself, just keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing I'm a little upset about is he does suffer from some of the uh, some mold lines, or not mold lines, uh, uh, gaps. As you can see there, he's got a little bit of an ass crack. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I, I really dig the model for Wolverine. I think he turned uh, turned out really well. He was an absolute joy to paint, uh, and I, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, very easy, very easy to assemble. And uh, yeah, just in general, great model. As you can see, I also chose the, uh, the masked version. So anyway, that is Sabretooth and Wolverine, two great models. Uh, definitely worth uh, taking a look at and grabbing for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, you can look forward to seeing these in a couple battle reports coming soon. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and as always, leave your comments below, and happy wargaming.